Hello guys and welcome to my community. Hi, my name is Jane Samson and this is my community, Jane It's Hub. You're welcome to this video today where I'll be sharing some very shocking realities that healthcare assistants are facing here in the UK. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, you are welcome. Join this community by subscribing, liking this video and sharing to everyone you know that this video will be of helpful. So today I'll be sharing what you can do if you currently find yourself in this situation as a domiciliary carer, as a healthcare assistant working here in the UK. Guys, I have received numerous emails, messages across my handles on the shocking realities, on the unbelievable realities that some healthcare assistants actually find themselves. It is sad, it is pathetic, but the truth is some of these things can be avoided if only we take the right step. Not to worry. From my experience, I'll be sharing things that I know that you can do if you find yourself in this situation. Once again, you are welcome. Let's jump right into the video. <music> Alright guys, so I got this email a couple of months back and just when I was thinking about it, I just thought I'd share this, you know, these realities that people actually face. It's not all creamy, it's not all what people think working in the UK is. There are some companies that are not really making life, you know, the way it should be for healthcare assistants. And I'll just be sharing with their permission some of these realities. So this email says, hello Jane, trust this meets you well. I have watched your video on domiciliary care. I can't even say what myself and other overseas carers are going through in our company. They don't provide cars for us, so we work on our legs six days a week. We can only have one day off. Imagine leaving the house at 6 a.m. to go for your duty and get home in most cases past 9 or past 10 p.m. I am exhausted. This is my third month and I'm already looking for a way out. The only issue is that I am bound to my employer to a contract of 6000 because I was sponsored fully. They paid my visa fee, flight ticket, TOS, and gave us one month free accommodation. We are expected to pay them £6,000 if you are leaving before the end of your three, month, three years contract. It doesn't matter if you are leaving a day to the end of the contract. Sis, everyone wants to leave because it's not favorable and we are in London paying heavily for rent. Most people would have left if not for the K pounds. At the moment, I don't mind borrowing it. The weather doesn't help. Imagine having one hour, one hour break or two, and you can't go home even to rest because of distance. So you have to gallivant in the cold. It's been crazy. I just thought to share my experience with you. This is from someone, a carer who is living in London. Now, most of you have an idea what domiciliary care is. So if you don't have an idea, domiciliary care is you providing um, care to your client in their own homes. So it involves you moving from one place to another. All right. Now, in, so in most cases, the company provides you with a car or they ask you to get your own car. All right. Now, most in, in, for, for carers living in London, it's almost impossible to drive. That's the truth because of, you know, the way London is. So most people commute on train or on buses. Now, it is really pathetic to make people walk on foot the whole day in the cold. This is what a lot of carers are facing in London. First and foremost is, I mean, it is not wise for your employer to pay everything for you. Because somehow they understand how the system works and they bind you with this. Now, they pay for your flight, they pay for CA, they pay for, they pay for everything. How do you now live? So that's the first thing I'm just going to let people know. By law, your employer is meant to provide and pay for your COS. That is what the law says. But every other thing, you know, comes as an extra. Your COS is also part of your COS maintenance means that they're providing accommodation for you. But your flight, your visa, your ticket, every other thing should be taken care of. But when they do these things for you, you are almost bounded to them that you cannot leave. And then you're, you're asked to pay, you know, they, they have a fee they ask you to pay. Now, my best advice if you find yourself in this situation is not favorable, first of all, to speak to the employer, all right? Speak to them to say, okay, the working conditions for me is not favorable. In this particular girl's case, I had to ring her up and she told me that she even had a medical emergency where she was rushed to the A&E and the hospital even summoned her back to the office to say, oh, you're faking your illness. You're not working. You don't want to work. It is that bad. 
Nobody, I repeat, nobody should be subjected to such working conditions, especially here in the UK, where it's a free country, it's a country where you should be able to express yourself, it's a country where you should be able to work freely and, you know, and legally. Number two point I want to state under this is join a union. As a healthcare worker, I've said this over and over, you need to join a union. This union, for in her own case, as if she's trapped. And that is how that is the kind of situation that most people find themselves. It's as if you're trapped, you know, by the, the contract because of the, the terms and condition. But the truth is, if it's affecting your health, of course you can leave. Of course, you can say, no, this is not working for me. And you can leave and you know you can come up to how to pay back this money's back. Because of course they spend this money on you and you have to pay the money back. If you join a union, a union will be able to give you a legal representative. Point number three, which is even meant to be the point number one, guys. You need to go through your contract before you sign it. What does your contract say? Ask questions, guys, before you come into the UK and you are binded by this. Most of these companies are not even owned by white people. They are owned by foreigners who manipulate the system and make, you know, working in the UK a living hell for most people. It's not meant to be so. So if you find yourself in this situation, first and foremost, before you even take any job, look at what their contract says. Point number two, do not allow any employer to pay for everything for you. You will be bounded by these things that you might find it difficult to leave. Point number three, if you're working under unfavorable conditions, you are not bounded to stay. Guys, you need to call, call them for a meeting, speak to them, and if nothing is done, go ahead and seek for legal advice. All right? So that is my advice for those that find themselves in this um, scenario. Okay? All right. Scenario number two. Now, this is a scenario of another carer and most carers, some carers also find themselves in this shocking reality that, they, that, you know, that they've come to work in the UK. This person says, hi Jenny, I started working here in the UK in October and to be honest, I'm not finding it funny. The driving alone is trainers and we are not being paid for travel time. Most of the time you drive from 6.45 to, to, to 10pm and only get about two hours break in between. I have developed constant backache that have refused to go. The fatigue is so much that I feel sleepy sometimes while driving, just because I don't get enough sleep at night. You work for about 13 hours and get paid for eight hours, and it's heartbreaking. Another thing is that their rotors are so undefined, and most times it's weekly or just three-week rotors that can be changed at any time. It is difficult. It is difficult for your spouse to even fit in and get a suitable job. And this is why my family hasn't joined me yet. Right now, I just started applying in care homes because I don't think I'll be able to cope for long. Please, how have you been coping with the stress, with the salary and with your family? This really, this really do have some health implication. Of course, it has some health implication. I work in domiciliary care in the UK and I know what it's like. Now, talking about the working hours, the truth is, my, my company gave me my contract and it was stated clearly on my contract that you'll be leaving the house early hours of the morning and coming back late. All right. The problem with some of us is that we do not read our contracts because we are so eager to come into the UK. We just want to live where we are. We just want to come into the UK. It's not all rosy. Most of you saw my videos on, you know, on my a day in the, my, my life as a, a domiciliary carer. I understood firsthand what I was coming into and I made up my mind that, yes, I was coming to this. And I understood that, yes, I might not do this, you know, for the, and for me, luckily, my visa was just one year visa. That is the, that is the lucky thing about me. So some people, they give them five years visa, three years visa, and then you come in and then, you know, they pay all these things for you and you're bounded by this thing. But the truth is, you, you can also sit down with, if you find yourself in this scenario, you think the working hours is too long, you're not paid for your travel time. Unfortunately, some companies pay, some do not pay. That's the reality of working as a domiciliary carer. But just have at the back of your mind that you are doing this for a short period of time. Have a long-term goal. That is what I can say in this scenario. Number two, if it's affecting your health, you think it's not working for you, sit down with your employer and say, look, this is not working. I have my health to think about. I have my family to think about. I sat down with my employers and I said, no, look at this. I am the one who is working and look at the challenges I'm facing. And we came to an agreement. Another point, I remember when I came in, I was actually not attending church. For the, I'm a Christian. The first couple of months, I wasn't attending church. And it wasn't fun, even though I was worshipping online. But I, after a couple of months, I said to my employer, I am a Christian and I, I really need to be going to church. Now, we came to an agreement that, uh, I mean, for the first afternoons on Sundays, most Sundays I don't work. If I work at all, I have to work in the evening. 
So these things get better over time and everything can be discussed. Everything can be arranged. It's a, it's a country where you need to be able to speak up. It's a free country. Nobody should bound you to work under condition that is not favorable, no matter what, no matter the contract that you sign. You can go in and sit down with them and give them your solid reasons. This is affecting my health. It's affecting my back. It's affecting my family. You can always come to a compromise on, but you say you want to come in and oh, you want to twist things. I'm sorry. That is why you need to look at your contract. You need to ask questions before you come in. Domestic care is not all rosy. It is tough. Is it manageable? Yes. If I could manage with it, anybody else could manage. So I'm saying to you, if you think the working hours is just too much, sit down with your employers, speak to them, and come to an agreement. If, especially if you have children, you can explain to them, I have children, I need to take care of my kids, let me have a definite router. Everything is working, but sometimes some of us are just too scared to speak up. We don't want to lose our job. Guys, it's a free country. Speak up all the time. Speak up. Better still, send emails so you can leave a trail to track back on what you have requested for. And of course, I know that things are working and things will get better. Guys, if you haven't subscribed up to this point, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the family. Join our beautiful family of Jenny's Hub. Click on the subscribe button. Share this video. Someone might benefit from it, all right? Someone might just learn a thing or two that will help them in their journey here in the UK, all oh, right? Jenny, congratulations on the arrival of your family. I thank God for you. I watched your video about the challenges domiciliary carers face in the UK. I got a job via an agent in London after so many unsuccessful attempts to get a job via online search. I paid the sum of the sum of seven million naira to the company and I arrived in November. Hmm. This is one sensitive topic that it really pierces my heart of how this whole health care visa has been hijacked by agents and making people pay sums of money that you, you, you can't even imagine. Seven million naira is equivalent to about maybe you know eight thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand pounds, which is a which is a lot. I, I, I don't know. I really do not know. Anyways, it's been a different story altogether. My employer gave me zero contract hours and I've only worked up to 40 hours in the third week I arrived. Ever since then, I barely work up to 20 hours a week. I have complained and complained, but they keep saying there's shortage of clients. I can barely survive as I had to borrow. Oh my God. Oh my God, guys, I had to borrow to pay the money they requested. I have been trying to register with agencies, but the process is also taking too long. I'm not sure what to do next at this point, as I'm full of regrets. I'm gradually sliding into depression. Please help and advise. Guys, it's no more, you know, it's, it's no more news that a lot of people are currently paying for COS. People are paying exorbitant fees that begin to wonder. One of the ladies I spoke to, one of the reasons she gave me, she said, oh, it's better off paying to come in and work than coming into school. Well, it makes sense to her. But the truth is, for the money you paid, if anything goes wrong, there is nobody you can complain to. That is the case scenario. You cannot go to the government. You can't go to anybody. You can't even voice it out because what you're doing is against the law. That is why this agent, they can do these things, this company can do these things and they can get away with it because they know that you cannot report to anybody and nothing will be done to them. The truth is, if you find yourself in this scenario, making someone pay that amount and then you can't even work up to that money is evil. That's, the word. That's just the word I can describe it. It is actually evil. It is evil and it is pure wickedness. It's beyond greed. This is pure wickedness because how are you going to survive? And this person is in London. People pay rent of London or what will pay of a three-bedroom house outside London. That's what people pay for a room in London. So how do you expect these people to survive? This is the sad reality of so many people you know, coming to the UK to, to pay and work as carers. The truth is, people have their reasons why they do these things. But I'm telling you, you'll be shocked at the realities when you come into the country. For point number one, do not pay for COS, guys. Do not pay. I'm saying this now openly on this channel. Do not COS is free. Someone said in my comment section the other day, Oh, you're a liar. COS is not free. Can you imagine that? Somebody saying to me, my that I'm a liar, that COS is not free. Your the employer is meant to provide COS, but unfortunately, since the whole thing has been hijacked, people are paying at exorbitant fees. And if you find yourself in this scenario, I mean, in this case, the only thing because you actually pay for it, the only thing in case you can do is to find another job and leave. 
That's all I can say. You know, as soon as you can't find another job, as long as you can get, you know, up to three months experience here in the UK, you can get another job and just je, 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 carry your load and leave. That's all I can say because you can't report to anybody. You can't go to any anybody to fight for you. There's no union that can fight. Nobody can go and fight for you. You just have to look for your way around about it. Well, here, you are here in the UK. Congratulations. So the only thing you can do, there's so many companies recruiting currently from within the UK. is just to find yourself, you know, a better company, maybe a care home, a hospital, and then leave. Guys, I hope you've subscribed. Go ahead and subscribe on this channel. This is where we share the juice on working and living in the UK. All right, so this is the last one I'm just going to share. This um, lady says, hello, Jenny. I saw hell with my previous employers. Sad. From nowhere, I developed high blood pressure. I had to call for ambulance twice. And despite sending the reports to my employers, they were still requesting I go to work the very next day. What? In the very first place, my contracted hours was about 40 hours, but sometimes I was booked for five days at a stretch and I have to leave the house by 6.15 a.m. to arrive at the first client at 6.30 a.m. And most times I don't get home until about 9 p.m. I had an accident. I was meant to stay with a client. I had an accident. I was meant to stay with a client at about 1 a.m. in the morning and I was allocated to go to work for a shift the next morning. It was hell. When I had episodes of high blood pressure and could barely get out of bed, they summoned me to the office and threatened to report me to the home office and revoke my COS. I had to keep working until my family members intervened and pulled me out of there. I was working with fear. I wish I knew better. <sighs> Guys, the truth is, we try, the, one of the reasons why I have this YouTube channel is to try as much as I can to open the eyes of people of what you're coming into. Working in domiciliary care is not, is not a joke. It is tough. You have to make up your mind what you want to come and do, all right? But working under unfavorable working conditions is a different story altogether and should not be. So if you're coming to the UK and you think you're going to get up in the morning by 9 o'clock and go to work and come by 5 o'clock, I'm sorry. That's, that's not what, that's not going to happen. But you being subjected to working under unfavorable conditions, it's not acceptable. You should not accept it. You get home by 1 a.m. and you're asked to go to work the next day. It is, not, it is, it is inhuman, all right? This is one of the reasons why I've asked people to join unions. I have the link of union in my description. You pay monthly. I've benefited so much from union. If I tell you what I've benefited, you will not believe me, but that's the truth. Guys, join union. Also, join communities. We have so many communities of different countries, WhatsApp group, Telegram. Join these communities and share your experiences. People will give you advice on the best way to go about these challenges. Guys, it's not all rosy. There are different challenges people go through. But the truth is, it can always get better. It can always get better. It can always progress onto something better. You can always see the positive side of it. Okay, guys? I wish you all the best and I'll see you guys in my next video. Take good care and bye-bye.